Hey, let's go over some of the details of the first section. So once you get into your stance, um, you want to have a good structure so that you are not easily pushed and you can deliver power in your attacks. So the first thing, we're going to start with our feet and then we're going to work our way up to the, to the top of our head. So when your feet are like this, the intention is to have your feet screw and drive into the ground and turn out like this. Okay, so if I was going to um, use that intention and if my feet actually move, it would actually move out like that. But we're going to grip it onto the ground with all the points of contact on our feet. All right, so the points of contact are, uh, is our heel, the ball of our foot, the smaller ball of our foot, and the toes. So you want to make contact with all the points of your foot and screw it into the ground this way. Your knees should be um, driving a little bit outwards, but then your muscles should be um, squeezing on the inside of your legs. So you feel that you have pressure going out this way, but also you have something pulling it back with your muscles on the inside. Alright, so it sounds um, contrary, but that's how you get the uh, strength in your stance, is you want to have them both going in both directions at the same time. So while it's going out, once again, the feet are going outwards, you heel and up all the points of your foot are touching the ground. Okay, make sure your toes are not up in the air, your toes are all touching the ground. Your knees are wanting to rotate this way and your inside is pulling it back in. Okay, now going up to your waist and your hip area. Like I said before, you want to tuck in your tailbone. So make sure that it's not like this. It's not like this, but you want to tuck it in underneath like this. Okay, but not too much like this because then you get a, get a uh, indentation here. So the reason for all these structures is to create a spring and wave effect through your body. Wing Chun has very small movements in the hands as you can see in our form. It doesn't really move out like this, it only moves out to here. So where do you generate your power from? You have to generate from your legs and from your spine. So the legs are spiraling up the energy like this, spiraling up. Once it reaches your spine, your spine becomes a bow. So here's the bow like this, it is releasing, like this. So here's the bow, it's, it's pulled and then releasing. So it goes from a curve to a straight. So you combine both, your legs come up and releasing. It's such a small movement, but when you can train it, you get lots of power. So spine, I mean the spiral comes up the feet, up the legs, up the spine, and then once it gets up to the spine, you want to transfer it to your shoulder, down into your elbow and into your wrist and into your knuckles. Alright, so there's actually three springs here. We have your hips, I mean your feet going up to your hips, through your legs, then we have your uh, tailbone going up to your uh, bone up here between your shoulders, the big one on your neck, behind your neck, and then we have the spring of the shoulders here and sinking the elbow. So you combine those three springs you get a lot of power in Wing Chun. Also, it becomes a form of defense. When you engage your muscles on the inside and outside and grip the floor with your feet while sprawling it out, you get a lot more resilience and protection for your muscles. Also, when you round up your spine, you get a lot more resilience in, the, in your waist area. And if you stick out your chest and pull your uh, elbows back, you get a lot more protection for the center and chest area of your body. So it, a really good stance, what it does is it gives you protection and it also gives you more power in your strikes and attacks.